Hey everybody, welcome back to BK's Bullets. Today we're going to be talking about Bloodshot, the movie. Hey everybody, welcome back to BK's Bullets. As always, I am your host, Brent Casina. We're taking a little bit more relaxed, casual status today. Under quarantine, uh, working from home this week, last week, and whenever else this ends. So, <clears throat> you know, through the whole rigmarole, we won't stand up the uh, camera stand and use the other microphone and all that jazz. So we're just going to do this quick and dirty. So I watched Bloodshot recently. It's on digital, available now for purchase if you want to. And uh, I wanted to take a look at it to let you guys know what I think if you should purchase it. Or you can wait three months and then rent it, which is kind of where I'm leaning right now. Um, so this is a movie, it's a vehicle for Vin Diesel basically to kind of establish himself outside of the Fast and Furious franchise, which is going to be ending in two films, 9 and 10, I think are the last two that they're going to do. Um, so Vin Diesel will be out of movies basically to be in after that, uh, movies that are guaranteed successes anyway. So he's been trying to find these other vehicles for him to do. He kind of exhausted the Riddick franchise. He tried to do The Last Witch Hunter, which I thought was an okay movie. It wasn't that bad. And uh, that didn't take off. So now he's doing this Bloodshot movie, which is to start a, you know, I guess they're kind of hoping to start a valiant comic book universe uh, movie franchise off of this, the back of this one. Unfortunately, uh, they're not going to do that, I don't think. Um... The movie was just kind of okay. It was very small budget, very bland, very by the numbers, I think. I felt like I'd seen everything in this movie before, even though Bloodshot hasn't been in um, movies before like that as a character. But I've seen the exoskeletons. I've seen the nanotech. I've seen the self-healing. Uh, there were no like really new ideas brought to this movie. And I think that's maybe because the size of the budget. Uh, there were some other things, too, where, like, you could tell, like, they're not in America. They're shooting somewhere else, but they're trying to pass it off as America. But, like, America doesn't have these small European-style churches in the center of towns as you're running around. And it just threw, like, it just threw the plausibility of it, the whole thing. Like, for example, this is what the example I'm talking about. Uh, Vin's character goes back to find his wife, basically, after he wakes up. And he gets in a chase after he meets his wife and finds out, you know, what he needs to find out. And then as they're chasing, they're running through the, these cafes and these small little alleys and like walls and stuff. And I'm watching it. I'm going now, I know he's supposed to be like an American soldier, but he went in is running around what town now? Like, and then I see the church, like this big church steeple in the middle of the town. I'm like, well, that's not America. I know that for sure. Uh, it was very reminiscent of the little French towns I was driving around in uh, when I was working in Lorient years ago. So it just threw me off. Like they didn't even try. The best thing they did that they did was they got a big SUV and put police on the side. And that was like the most Americanizing thing that they did. They didn't, you know, there were still like French, uh, not French, but street signs and the other language or different symbols. You know, they use a lot of circular signs and stuff over in Europe. So I don't know if this was like Czech Republic or Hungary, Romania, all that kind of stuff is usually where they film over there unless they're doing like on location in London or Paris. But um, that's certainly what it was. And it just took me out of the film for a minute when you can see the see the seams, so to speak, of like the movie magic. So uh, who is Bloodshot? Let's go through that. Um, Bloodshot is a character. He belongs to the Valiant comic book universe. Uh, they are another publisher. They are outside the big two, uh, Marvel and DC, you know, and then you have Image, which is a bunch of like independent things. So they're not really a universe per se, not anymore. Uh, I think maybe they were trying when they launched in the early 90s, but that's no longer the case. But Valiant was started in the 90s, started by Jim Shooter, and it was a bunch of these different ideas that were coming together and kind of melded together as one, uh, you know, interactive characters kind of doing what Marvel and DC were doing, but not... The nice thing about their characters at the time, and still today, is that none of their characters are like a direct copy of Captain America or uh, Superman or Batman. or Everything kind of has its own spin. 
So you've got characters like Exo Man of War, Bloodshot, Archer and Armstrong, Ninjack, Solar Man of the Atom, um, Quantum and Woody, or a few others. And, um, you know, they're interesting characters. The Eternal Warrior. They're all interesting characters, and they're not one-to-one -one copies from Marvel and DC. They all have their own special thing. Exo Man of War is a guy who has an alien suit of armor, but he's actually a Visigoth from, like, the, uh, the Dark Ages that somehow has lived for thousands of years throughout through, through space travel and stuff, and then he lands on present-day Earth in this weird suit of armor and has to learn to adapt. That's very interesting. Um, Ninjak is a modern-day ninja, which is kind of weird. Uh, he actually wears a ninja outfit, so he's not like uh, Hawkeye or whatever these other Marvel DC ninja characters are. And he's an assassin for the British government. Um, Archer and Armstrong, and there's some weird cult stuff there. The Eternal Warrior is a guy who's been living forever that uh, serves the Earth, basically, as like a, um, a protector of the Earth kind of thing. And then you have Bloodshot, who is a nanite-enhanced uh, human with healing powers and super strength and all that kind of stuff that comes with nanites. Whatever they want to program in that week for the comic book they can, or that month for the comic book they can put in through the nanites. Um, so to me, he's like the least interesting character of all the Valiant characters. I don't know why they went with him for the first one. I guess because you can kind of do his movie on a smaller budget and that's what they did here. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't grab you in the way that the first Iron Man did. It doesn't make him cool enough in the way that, like, you know, Deadpool did, even on its smaller budget. Because Bloodshot's kind of very... Vin, he's kind of a Vin Diesel type. So I, I see why they cast Vin Diesel as this uh, character. He's very monotone, very serious, at, at least in the comic books. I haven't read a whole lot of Bloodshot. I've read a lot of the other new reboot stuff from the Valiant Universe through Comixology Unlimited, but I was just never drawn to this. That being said, uh, you know, the movie doesn't do anything to ingratiate you for Vin either, uh, you know, or Bloodshot or whatever the hell his name is. You know, the, the trailer gave everything away. And, you know, at first I was like, why are they giving so much away in the trailer? And then I realized, like, that's all the movie really has to show. And, and that's unfortunate. Um, so I guess if you've seen the trailer, you've seen the movie... You don't really need to go. There's no big bad. There's no big twist. There's no big reveal. Whereas if they hadn't shown all that stuff in the trailer, maybe there would have been. And it would have been a lot more fun to watch. But since you knew all that stuff going in, you could kind of predict where the movie was going to go. Oh, the monster turns on its masters kind of thing. And uh, you just go from there. So they only had to build a couple of sets, had a couple of big CG shots, and that's it. So it's kind of a bummer. The other thing that's weird with this movie is is that they don't really keep the bloodshot look. Like, the bloodshot has uh, this hole in his chest that's supposed to be actually bleeding, hence the name, uh, and it looks like a big bullet hole. They don't do that here in this movie. He's The middle of his chest glows red because of the heat of the nanites when they're being overworked. That's strange. A change, I guess. The other thing, too, is that bloodshot in the comic books has this, like, pale, uh, ghostly white skin, and Vin Diesel's Vin Diesel, so he's not going to do any makeup, I guess. He does for certain sections of the film, but it's not because of the nanites. It's because he's fighting and he's crushing a lot of concrete, and the concrete dust just covers him up. Similar to the way you got the gray and black uh, Deadpool suit at the end of Deadpool 2 because they were fighting in concrete dust. And then they, you know, he brushes it off, and then the red suit's underneath. Uh, that same thing applies here with Bloodshot. Uh, he fights in some concrete battles and then gets pale just because of the concrete dust and then it brushes off later. And it's like, why even do that homage if you're just going to throw it away? Like, either do the character or don't. And I think that's what Iron Man got right. You know, they did the character. They didn't shy away from any of the weird comic booky elements. And I think they're doing that here. I don't know if it's because of the budget reasons. They don't want to paint somebody white um, all the time or pale white. You know, maybe it's because of, um, you know, a woke reason. It's weird to have this Latin American actor. Uh, I think Vin Diesel is Latin. I kind of think so. I uh, don't know for sure. But maybe they don't want to paint him as a white man, you know. Um, I have no idea. So it is what it is. Is it great? No. 
the action here is not very interesting to look at. It's kind of by, it's kind of tame. It's by the numbers. I mean, after all, you do just have a guy punching people and them going across the room uh, in non-inventive ways and kind of healing himself, which you've seen in the Wolverine movies before. So everything here kind of feels recycled, been there, done that. The only good thing about the movie is Isa Gonzalez, who's a pleasure to look at whenever she's on screen, um, but she feels like the only person here who's kind of actually trying. And that's kind of weird because she has such kind of a, a smaller role. And it's, it is intricate to the, it's integral to the plot, but it's not, um, you know, she's not the co-lead, I guess you would say. Uh, Guy Pierce is in here. He does a f okay job. He's just doing a paycheck, and it's kind of a bummer to see Guy Pierce come from, you know, as like a lauded actor and stuff, and then kind of bumped his way down into doing these weird little movies. Like, he's basically playing a less intense version of his Iron, Iron Man 3 character, and that's a real bummer because I really enjoyed him in Iron Man 3. So, is Bloodshot a movie worth paying 20 bucks to own for right now? Unless you're a huge fan of the character, no. Uh, should you see it? If you want to check it out, I guess go ahead. But my recommendation would be to wait until June whenever this thing is actually available to rent. So you're not spending $20 right now and uh, check it out then. Or, you know, go in with a bunch of, I was going to say friends, but you're not supposed to get together with a bunch of people right now under the COVID-19 rules. Um, so I guess you could, you could go through together and like through the Cash App or Venmo and then just trade your... Uh, you know, download, login, or whatever, whatever platform you use, uh, and do it that way, but I say hold off if you want to check it out, and, um, you know, save your 20 bucks for something better, and, you know, if I had to rate this out of 10, or no, I'd usually do five, five stars, this is a purely a three-star movie, it's barely a three-star movie, um, so I think there are a lot of other better options to watch out there right now than Bloodshot. And that's unfortunate for Vin Diesel and unfortunate for the Valiant Universe. So I'm sorry. Try harder next time, I guess. So that's it for me for Brent Casino. I'm signing off. If you like this video, like it down below. Comment, rate, subscribe, all that nonsense. Hit the bell. And we will see you guys next time in the funny pages.